A few weeks ago, I made a video about my first impressions of the Enscape rendering software, and the most liked comment is the one where you guys want me to check out Twin Motion. So naturally, as a new Enscape fanboy, I was like, nah, man, I'm loyal to this software now. You evil temptation rendering softwares, stay away. Well, that was how it was until a week ago. I swear I tried to fight it, but sad to say, guys, I gave in to the Twin Motion Temptation. That sounds like an 80s aerobics dance group. <laughs> Here comes the Twin Motion Temptation! Anyways, you already know what this video is about. This is my first impression of Twin Motion. To start things off, I just want to mention that my hands on experience with this software is very limited. And by that, I mean that I've only used it for about 2 hours, plus or minus, and that's it. Also, while using it, I also watched a few videos on how to navigate the software, which brings us to my first point. This software is a little harder to navigate than Enscape. So unlike your typical rendering softwares like V-Ray and Enscape, Twinmotion is not a plugin type renderer, it is a standalone program. So what that means is you have to import your SketchUp files into Twinmotion and ultimately if you ever want to change something on your main model's massing or shape, like for example you want to add a window, the only way you can do that is to go out of Twinmotion. Then you have to open your 3D model file which in my case is made in SketchUp then you have to edit your model in SketchUp. So let's add a window right here, like so. Now all you got to do is to save it in SketchUp, then go back to your Twin Motion rendering software and then just refresh your important file right here. And boom, your changes have now been applied to your Twin Motion rendering scene. So yeah, if you think about it, it's not really that hard to change things. And it still renders a bit faster than V-Ray, but the renderings you get from this software will look a little bit game-like or gamey. Which brings us to our second point, the render quality. So Twinmotion runs on the Unreal Engine rendering software, which is mainly used by game developers. And that is why if you look at my render window right here, it looks like I'm playing GTA 5 or Sims or something like that. Now with that being said, the renders you are going to get from this software won't be uber realistic, but that is a great trade-off for the advantages you get from this software being game-like. So one thing I love about this software is how you navigate to your viewport. So to move around, you could either choose to fly or to walk on ground level. So if you press M, you fall to the ground and you walk just like a normal person. And then you can press F, which makes you fly like magic. Wee, I'm Harry Potter flying around on my broomstick. <coughs> I don't know where that voice came from. So just like in the games, you use your WASD keys to move around and when in flight mode, you can use your Q and E keys to fly up or down. Then to look around, you could use your mouse. So just right click and drag your viewport to your desired angle. Also, you can use the middle mouse button to navigate the camera around. So this is by far the most fun I've had navigating through a render window. It's like Counter-Strike but with architecture. Anyways, another thing I love about Twinmotion is the Entourage library. So when you import a tree into the scene, you will immediately be amazed at how detailed the tree is. Also, if you guys will notice, the tree is wiggling. Kinda like that annoying tree blocking Route 36 in Johto region or Kanto region. Yo, Pokemon players know what I'm talking about. Anyways, as I was saying, the Entourage in Twinmotion is animated. Also, there are a ton of options to customize the Entourage. So let's go back to our wobbly tree right here. If we click on that, on our submenu down below, we could see a bunch of parameters that we could change. So we could make our tree bigger or smaller, or we could change the season of the tree. So you want a creepy dead tree, change your season to winter, or you want like a slightly brown tree, change your season to autumn. Also, if you hate wobbly trees, you can turn the wind off. So you can toggle it off or on to make the tree wobbly or not wobbly. So I suggest that you guys turn the wobbling effect off because the wobbling effect consumes a lot of processing power from your PC. You don't want to see your PC burst into flames when you put in too much wiggly trees in your scene. Talking about burning your PC, another setting that could push your PC to the limit is the weather setting. So in Twinmotion, you have the option to change the weather. So you could make it sunny, like it's summer, or you could make it rainy, like half of the year here in the Philippines. Or if you are like me and haven't experienced snow yet, 
you can make it snow in your renders and pretend that it's actually snowing in real life. Wee! Do you wanna build a snowman? It doesn't matter if it's fake. I can render anything or anyone. Come out and play what rhymes with me. Play. Anyways, aside from the weather, you could also pinpoint your exact location. And Twin Motion is going to generate accurate shadows for your geographic location. You can even set the time and date. So this will come in super useful for your solar studies. So back in my day, we had to consult some confusing ass chart that to this day, I still have no idea how to use it. Kinda looks like some sort of wavy thing and there's a bunch of numbers and I get confused and just give up midway trying to read the chart. Anyways, we are getting off topic. Let us move on to the people's entourage. This again is one of my favorite things here. So you can get 3D model people from Twinmotion's library and they are labeled as characters. So just like video game characters, these 3D people can move autonomously. Okay, so for example, let us import another Alex into our scene right here. So right here, you can change his clothing color right there. Or you could change his idle animation you can make him talk on the phone or you could just stand like a freaking weirdo but that's not all guys this is like my favorite part of twin motion so you can make your characters here dance i'm gonna be honest guys alex is quite a good dancer he can do the moonwalk pop and lock and stuff so if you're rendering a dance studio project twin motion man it's got your back so aside from that you could also make alex sit in midair like magic so that's some David Blaine stuff right there. It's like floating. Okay, so let us explore some other poses so you can make him lie down like that. Or you could turn Alex into an architect just by clicking worker number five. Like so, he's even holding some blueprints and stuff, man. Super realistic. Okay, since we're talking about Entourage, let us talk about the library. So the Twin Motion library is pretty extensive. So the Twin Motion material library has all the materials that you could think of. You got glass right there, you got metals, you got woods, you got bricks, plastics. They even have water, which is like mind blowing, but I'ma discuss that later. So aside from the very extensive material library, they also have a ton of awesome 3D models like excavators right there. You also have bulldozers. So if you want a bulldozer in your scene, boom, there's a bulldozer. What, you don't like bulldozers? How about boats? So let us put a sailboat in the middle of our render scene. Boom! There's a boat blocking your house now. So just in case your design is bad, just put a boat in front of it. Problem solved. So it's not just the boats, it even gets crazier. So you can even place freaking airplanes and freaking hot air balloons. Like there's an airplane and a hot air balloon right there. Let's make it two hot air balloons because why not? It's twin motion. So it doesn't stop there. They even include IES lighting, which is, I'm gonna be honest guys, it's one of the most frustrating lighting sources to create in V-Ray. But in twin motion, all you got to do is click it on your library and just import it on your scene. And bam, instant IES lighting. But aside from all of those amazing things, one thing stands as my favorite asset out of all these 3D library assets and that is the water material. Now, this is probably one of the hardest materials to recreate, but man, Twin Motion has got their water material down. So right here, I already have the River O2 material applied on the floor right here. So we could change that easily by dragging in River O1. Boom, it's a slightly less murky water. So the reflections and the ripples of their water material is pretty on point. Also, the material settings has a ton of customizability. So you can change the color of this if you want red water. Why not? They're walking on wine. That's some next level Jesus stuff. So you could also change the amount of reflection the water has. And not only that, if you click this settings tab right here, more settings will appear. But that's not all. You can click this more tab on the bottom and guess what will happen if you click that? More parameters will appear. Like the customizability is amazing with this software. Although while navigating through their menu system, I got confused on how to go back to the previous menus. Like there's no back button. So it took me like five minutes to discover how to go back to the previous parameters. So to do so, we just click on these words on the upper right of our sub menu right here, which you know is a little confusing. I just wish that they placed like a back button or something pretty obvious for, you know, people like me to find easily. And this brings us to our next point. 
the user friendliness of Twinmotion. So as a former architecture student, I know the feeling of using new softwares. It is a little bit daunting. Cause you know, you got to learn a new thing that will take up your time. But there's like a thousand other things that you gotta do. Like you gotta draw some cathedral in France and you gotta make a scale model and all that stuff. You guys get the point. So in terms of navigation, Twinmotion is a bit on the steep learning curve side of things. So when I first opened it, I didn't know what to do. So I imported my model. Now what? Also, there's like these very, very tiny arrows on the upper left and right hand side that reveal your library and your scene objects. So you can barely see that I would have never seen those things if I was rushing a project. So yeah, after 10 minutes of trying to figure out this software myself, I gave up and went to YouTube to watch some tutorials. And that is when I saw this video by Architecture Inspirations. Great channel by the way, you guys should check him out. Anyways, his video entitled 5 Tips for Creating Landscape in Twinmotion is a great tutorial that got me started on my path on learning Twinmotion. So yeah, this software definitely requires some preliminary tutorials, but after that, Ooh boy, get ready for countless hours spent placing trees and watching 3D people dance. Anywho, let us move on to the next thing I like about this program and that is its price. So right now as of recording this video, the price of Twinmotion is, drumroll please, it is free just like a dove flapping in the summer breeze. So yeah, if you're looking for a free rendering software that looks kinda decent, has a huge selection of 3D assets and is extremely fun to use. Well, look no further cause Twinmotion is the rendering software for you. You can download it through the Epic Game Store. So just be careful not to accidentally download Fortnite. That's a deep dark hole where hours can pass by in the blink of an eye. Anyways, that about wraps up my first impressions of Twinmotion. Now, there are a lot of things I have not discovered yet in this software. As I said, I've only spent about 2 hours with it because I accidentally downloaded Fortnite. Damn you, Epic Game Star! Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will see you on my next video. Flying peace!